Okay, as requested over in the uh, Days 3D uh, forum, I've been asked to create a tutorial on modeling a, a house, and uh, I'm not <clears throat> I'm not an architect, and I really don't uh, build house models. I've tinkered with it from time to time, but uh, I thought I would uh, make an attempt at this and kind of show some some techniques that I would use and. Uh, show some of Hexagon's tools uh, to the new users. I know that uh, since Days has been given uh, Hexagon away for free, that uh, I'm sure we've got quite a, a few more uh, Hexagon users. Um, during this tutorial, if you'll notice right up here, um, I've went into the settings to display the command viewer and it will pretty much show uh, the keys that I'm using and the, the clicks and so on and so forth um, I'm not going to cover all the tools there's no way I could do that and I'll just try to cover what is uh, relevant uh, to this particular model so anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, get going here. Okay, under the 3D uh, primitives, we're going to go up here. We're going to click on cube. And then I'm going to hold my shift key. So, and then click. That snaps that, the uh, cube to the very center of our grid there in our 3D world. I'm using the universal manipulator tool. Uh, the universal manipulator tool uh, you can do everything with it scale rotate and translate um, if you look uh, right down here in this corner you can see uh, we've got a little widget there this has a uh, green axis x-axis and a blue axis and uh, the green is y X is uh, black and Z or Z is <clears throat> the blue. And those colors correspond here on our manipulator. Um, this is the X, this is the Y, and this would be the Z axis. So if I need to scale on the X axis, I use the red. Scale in the green is the Y, blue is the Z or Z. Also, in uh, corresponding to that, is right over here um, in our properties area. If you will notice, we have a column here um, that is uh, position, rotate and size and uh, this first column here is the x-axis and as you can see it's kind of pink it's not exactly red but it does correspond uh, with the widget here and then of course you have the, uh, the kind of a pale green which corresponds with the y-axis and then of course you have this kind of pastel purple color here that corresponds with the blue and that's how you can remember uh, what those axes are in case you need to enter some values into here so anyway let's start moving along a little quicker here okay I've got my cube and I've, I've scaled it out a little bit now I'm going to uh, click my right mouse key, uh, brings up the context menu. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to select the edge mode. It can also be done up here. Um, and you can do it from up here too uh, at the menu. So I'm going to select one of these edges here and then I'm going to open up my context menu again I'm going to uh, select ring also <clears throat> with that highlighted you will notice that right here uh, will give you the hotkey 
uh, to make that. So let's see if I can get that to go away. Okay, there we go. Okay, if I select one of these edges, the hotkey for ring select is K, so I could do that. And what that does is select a ring all the way around. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, with that edge ring uh, selected, I'm going to tap my X key, which creates a loop all the way around our cube here. I could also do that up here. Anyway, let's. Uh, so I clicked outside my object there to deselect. The way I'm going to select this top edge, we're going to kind of start to speed up again here. So I want to keep this time down a little bit. So I'm just going to drag this up to start making a roof in the uh, Y axis. Okay, and then again, now we're going to start using our uh, ring select again. So ring select, tap the X, create that new loop there. Now I'm going to select one of these edges, context menu, and I'm going to select loop, and I'm going to kind of drag it over this way just a bit in the X axis. And now we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to well, uh, let's do that different this time. Let's uh, go ahead and tap your X key, and that's going to bring up the tessellate tool. And on this last icon, here's the one we're going to use, tessellate by slice. So if I just click on that, I'll hold my shift key. What we're going to do here is create a loop. If I hold my shift key, it's going to snap to the center or it's going to snap to the nearest point. And uh, if you don't know what point is, I, I guess at some point I will make a very basic beginner's tutorial. Um, this is semi-basic. So anyway, as you, as you can see, um, what we did there was create a loop all the way around our geometry there. I'm going to make one here. I'm also going to make one here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to tap my X key again for test light and this time I'm going to snap to a vertice here and I'm holding my shift keys so it snaps to the center of this edge and I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to come back over here to this point and I'm going to hit enter to validate that. Now I brought up my context menu and I switched to face selection. And we've got those faces right there selected. Now we can do this a couple of different ways this next part. Um, we can go right here. Choose this icon which is extract. And let me show you what that does. We're going to click it. And if you'll notice right here now we have two objects listed in our in our scene tree so um, the uh, form 0 is our original geometry form 1 is the one we just extracted so if I move that out you can see we extracted that from the original geometry so now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm make sure you're still in face mode and we're going to select all the faces on this new geometry. Now what we need is is all these faces to be flat. So a way you can do that is remember I talked about over here um, a corresponding um, uh, corresponding what? Anyway this area right here Okay, and we need to change the size, which will be right here, on the z-axis, and we're going to zero that out. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight that. I'm going to type zero, and I'm going to hit enter. And what you what uh, you'll see here is that 
geometry that we extracted from our original geometry is flat now in the uh, z-axis. So now we're going to switch back to the edge mode. I'm just going to go here. Um, well, I'll tell you what we'll do first. Uh, let's go ahead and select both of our um, forms here. And what I did is I just uh, used the shift key to select both of those. And now I'm going to, here in the vertex modeling tab, or the surface modeling tab, you will have the same icon. And it's this icon here. kind of looks like a cylinder with, I don't know, something wrapped around it. That's a weld tool. And what we're going to do is uh, weld these two objects together. So I'm just going to click that. And as you can see right here, we had form 0 and 1, and now we have 2. And now we these uh, two, two different objects that we had, now they've become one. They're joined, joined together. They're part of the same object. Uh, so now let's go to the edge selection. I've uh, got something else I want to show you here. And instead of going to edge, let's go to uh, face selection. I'll select all these faces here. And then what I'm going to do um, to select all my faces, all my edges uh, around the border here, is I'm just going to tap my B key. And as you can see, let me zoom in here. All the outside edges are selected. So let's do that again. I'm going to select faces. I'm going to tap my B key. Oh, I selected something back there too. Let's do it again. Okay, all those faces selected. Tap B. Now all the edges on the border are selected. So now let's go back here and do the same thing there. Let's just loop it. And that selects all those faces in the back there. I hope you can see that. So now what we're going to do is go to the vertex modeling tab up here and we're just going to hit bridge. And as you can see that connected all those faces up there to give us this uh, little extrusion on our house. I could take this and I could move it out a little bit if I wanted to. But um, I can't really use the reference image that was that is uh, kind of the basis for this tutorial because it may be copyrighted I don't know so unless I have permission to use something in uh, one of these videos I'm gonna try not to do it um, I do have another video that's coming up down the road a, a ways uh, that I'm going to make that I had to actually email um, the company where I got the reference image. But anyway, so uh, anytime you're going to use an image or something and do a recording or do something with it, please make sure that uh, you ensure that uh, you have the rights to use it. And uh, But I think uh, this video has been long enough, and hopefully you pick something up here. Um, of course, this, this model so far is not in the exact dimensions or, or probably what it would look like in the reference uh, image. But if uh, um, hopefully you did pick something up here. So anyway, I've got to go. Uh, we're just going to leave it at that on this one, and then uh, we'll pick back up in another tutorial. So you may want to go ahead and save your file so you can kind of pick up uh, where we left off. So, all right. Now, that's it for now, and we'll see you in the next one.